हेलो फ्यूचर डॉक्टर्स वेलकम टू दिपेनिज्म आई एम डॉक्टर दिपेन शाह एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द डाइवर्सिटी सेगमेंट एंड सो फार वी हैव रीच्ड इन किंगडम प्लांटे टू डिवीजन जिम्नोस्पर्मे इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियोस आई हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट डिवीजन एलगे ब्रायोफाइटा टेरिडोफाइटा एंड राइट नाउ वी आर बिगिनिंग विद द डिस्कशन ऑफ जिम्नोस्पर्मे एंजियोस्पर्मे इज स्पेसिफिकली डिस्कस्ड इन द टॉपिक मॉर्फोलॉजी ऑफ फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स so coming to the division gymnosperme now gymnosperme as the name suggests sperma means this is a seed producing plant and gymno means open or naked seeds now the reason for that is in this gymnosperme plants there is no formation of fruit and the reason for that is since they have only ovule present in the plant body which transforms into seed after fertilization and since there is no presence of ovary and hence there is no fruit formation in the plants belonging to category gymnosperme now gymnosperme is specifically belonging to the sub kingdom phanerogamy phanerogams are those plants in which the reproductive organs are clearly visible gymno and angiosperme both are categorized as phanerogams apart from this in gymnosperme what we observe is the sporophytic plant body and in this sporophytic plant body we observe development of true root stem and presence of leaf so this have a well differentiated plant body now when we discuss about the roots in gymnosperme mostly they have presence of tap root system tap root means a true root which develops specifically from the radical apart from this it has been observed in certain plants for example in pinus that the root is known as mycorrhizae now the rhizae term means the root and myco means there is association with a fungi so there is fungal association with the roots of pinus and this helps in the fertility of the soil as well so there is presence of mycorrhizae in other categories like in cycas plant they have roots which are known as the which are known as the corolloid roots and the reason why they are known as corolloid roots is because this corolloid roots has symbiotic association of cyanobacteria which we also call it as bga that is blue green algae so cyanobacteria or bga are associated with roots of cycas hence the roots are known as corolloid roots even cyanobacteria which will be performing nitrogen fixation they increase the fertility of the soil so cycas has presence of tap root plus presence of corolloid roots as well so this is about the discussion about the root system that is tap root when we describe about the stem then remember in the stem portion they have two types of stem either it could be an unbranched stem or they could be having a branched stem unbranched stem has been observed in cycas whereas branched stem has been observed in pinus plants when we discuss about the leaf then the leaf which is present it could be either a simple leaf or it could be a bipinnate compound leaf so bipinnate compound leaf has been observed specifically in cycas whereas in certain plants which are belonging to conifers then the coniferous plants they have presence of needle like leaves so needle like leaves are specific characteristic of coniferous plants also in gymnosperme the leaf forms an aggregate cluster and this aggregate cluster of leaf is known as cone or it is known as strobili so this strobili is basically the cluster of leaves and this cluster of leaf we call it as we call it as sporophyll so basically sporophyll the terminology suggests that there is chlorophyll that is it's a leaf and it is going to produce spores but this sporophyll are present in clusters which are known as cone specifically in gymnosperme there is presence of a male cone and there is presence of a female cone 
the male cone is a cluster of leaf which are known as microsporophyll whereas the female cone is considered as a megasporophyll and the sporophylls they will be consisting a structure known as sporangium in males it will be known as the microsporangium and in the females the megasporophyll will contain megasporangium inside the microsporangium and megasporangium there will be development of the gametophyte that is the male and the female gametophyte respectively so this is the general structure about gymnosperm also remember that gymnosperm are usually known as xerophytes now the reason they are known as xerophytes because they usually grow in cold regions in india they are mainly restricted to the himalayan regions also the leaf they are resistant to the extreme environmental conditions like dryness and humidity as well so this is about the general structure about gymnosperm now we'll be discussing about the life cycle of gymnosperm so let us now discuss about the life cycle of gymnosperm in the life cycle the main dominant phase in gymnosperm is the sporophyte plant body so suppose we are representing two sporophytic plant bodies one of which is the male parent and the other is the female parent and sporophytes are usually diploid so suppose this sporophyte which develops the proper root system stem system and leaf and the cluster of leaf which it develops is known as the male cone or male strobilus this male cone is specifically cluster of leaves which we call it as microsporophyll so this microsporophyll is going to contain a structure which is known as microsporangium and inside the microsporangium there will be a particular cell which is known as the microspore mother cell so a particular cell inside the microsporangium it develops into microspore mother cell which is going to be diploid and this microspore mother cell undergoes the cell division meiosis and due to meiosis there is development of microspores which are going to be haploid the microspores which are generated this microspore then develops inside it the male gametophyte so there is development of male gametes inside the microspores and this male gametophyte containing the male gametes so that is the microspore is also considered as the pollen grain which is a highly reduced structure so pollen grains or the microspores develops inside it two male gametes so there is generation of two male gametes which are going to be haploid now when we discuss about the sporophytic plant which is the female plant body then this sporophyte consists of the female cone so the events are going to be correlated with similar to male part this female cone contains cluster of leaves which are known as megasporophyll and inside the megasporophyll there is development of a structure known as megasporangium in fact this megasporangium is actually known as the ovule so ovule is considered as the megasporangium and this ovule contains a covering known as integuments hence we also call it as an integumented megasporangium so it has presence of integuments in this ovule there is a special tissue which develops which is known as nucellus so remember in the megasporangium or the ovule there is development of a tissue which is a diploid tissue known as the nucellus and inside the nucellus a specific cell differentiates to form the megaspore mother cell so megaspore mother cell which is produced is going to be diploid and this megaspore mother cell now undergoes the cell division meiosis just like here microspore mother cell was undergoing and this megaspore mother cell produces the megaspores which are going to be haploid now remember future doctors that in meiosis one diploid parent cell can produce four haploid gametes so here four microspores are produced 
similarly here four mega spores are produced but remember that the four mega spores that are generated out of these three mega spores they undergo degeneration so three mega spores are degenerated and only one functional mega spore is going to persist and this one functional mega spore is also known as the endosperm remember future doctors that in gymnosperms the endosperm is produced before the process of fertilization so far the male gamete and female gametes have not fused whereas in angiosperm the endosperm is produced after fertilization this is one of the favorite neat questions also another neat question that is asked is about the ploidy level since the endosperm is developed the developed before fertilization the endosperm in gymnosperm is haploid whereas in angiosperms the endosperm is a triploid tissue because of triple fusion that is a secondary nucleus fusing with the male gamete forming a triploid endosperm whereas in gymnosperm that is haploid now inside this functional megaspore or the endosperm there is development of two archegonia so these are the two sex organs or sex cells two archegonial cells are produced and inside the archegonia there is development of the female gamete that is the ovum so female gamete or ovum is produced which is going to be haploid now what happens is this microspore containing the two male gametes it gets transferred directly onto the archegonial chamber and that pollen grains with the male gametes are carried with the help of wind so the pollination that we observe is known as wind pollination which is known as anemophily so remember that in gymnosperms there is wind pollination also this pollination occurs directly so this is a direct pollination wherein the microspore will be released into a chamber known as an archegonial chamber as the pollen grains lands on this a uh, chamber of the archegonia it produces pollen tube and this pollen tube carries the two male gametes so the male gametes are carried towards the female gamete and remember that one male gamete is going to fuse with the female gamete and that results in formation of the zygote which is again a diploid cell the second male gamete is degenerated it is not used in gymnosperme whereas in angiosperme the second male gamete is used hence in angiosperme we observe a characteristic process that is known as double fertilization but that is only and only observed in angiosperms in gymnosperm out of the two male gametes only one is going to be utilized so here the zygote has formed the zygote will develop into the embryo and this embryo will further develop wherein the ovule that is formed it is going to transform into the seed where inside the seed this embryo is going to germinate and that will develop into again a new sporophytic plant body so a sporophytic generation will be again produced now since in gymnosperme the pollen grains are being transferred and there is development of pollen tube this process is also known as siphonogamy so whenever the pollen tube carries the male gamete this botanical term for this process is known as siphonogamy remember the same pollen tube formation is also observed in angiosperm hence gymnosperme and angiosperme are known as siphonogamous plants also what has been observed is in lower gymnosperms i mentioning over here in lower members of gymnosperm what is observed is the male gametes are motile and hence the process is known as zoido siphonogamy whereas in higher gymnosperms the male gametes are non motile and hence we call the process as just siphonogamy so in the process of fertilization we use the term zoido siphonogamy and siphonogamy for lower gymnosperms and higher gymnosperms so this is the entire life cycle of gymnospermae if you observe majority of the stages of the plant is diploid 
where is the haploid gametophytic generation is produced inside the sporophyte and it is a highly reduced structure hence the life cycle in gymnosperme we call it as a diplontic life cycle so this is a diplontic life cycle which has been discussed in gymnosperme so this was the overall discussion about the structure and life cycle of gymnosperme in my next video we'll be discussing about the classes of gymnosperme that's all from the painism and stay tuned for my further videos bye